my mom really does make the best food that's not even up for debate most of the things i learned to cook i learned from her and now i take them and put personal twists and then present them to you on my blog and on my channel i've done drops several times in the past and today we're going to add another recipe and for today we're going to make some karafu and ginger drop scones very easy and i hope you're ready to learn this very very delicious recipe if you're yet to subscribe please do and if you already have let's get going karibu sana, and i'm so happy to have you here The very first thing I want to speak about before we go right ahead into the cooking process is the star ingredient of this dish and that is the karafu. Karafu is clove and it's pretty common here in Kenya. I like buying the whole pack, the seeds, ah, the pack of whole seeds from the supermarket because I do appreciate having whole spices in my pantry. The packet goes for about 60 bob but you can also get the pre-ground spice in the spice aisles of our supermarket for about about the same price about 60 bob or 100 bob i'm not too sure but it cannot be more than 100 shillings so today i chose to use the whole spice and with whole spices before i incorporate them into my cooking obviously you have to grind them but before grinding them i like toasting mine on an ungreased pan so that it awakens the oils and intensifies the flavor muhimu sana so don't forget that even with whole pilau spices the, the process is pretty much the same so for my karafu aka my clove it's the same process i place them on an ungreased pan toss them and toasted them until fragrant and then i transfer them into my kinu and i pounded them until roughly ground i then transfer them and prepared for the cooking process if you prefer to have your karafu very very fine feel free to do that but i like mine a lot more textured and a bit more rough because i find that adds a lot more character to whatever i'm cooking it with clove has a million health benefits and you guys know i will always talk about health benefits because miss jimona won't give you no more spices clove really helps with easing joint pains and helps with digestion of the food you eat so there are also a lot more health benefits so please make sure you google and in case you're in a supermarket and you come across a spice which you don't really know and you're like i this looks a bit scary just take out your phone google then you will see it's not only delicious for you to eat but also very very good for your health overall musiogope spices even when had the end of time don't be afraid of spices and please please utilize and call Google sour. <laughs> now that we are done with that, let's get started. I'm going to begin with my dry ingredients, and to my bowl, I'm going to add my self raising flour, followed by my cinnamon, then my karafu, and then a dash of fresh ginger. I will mix everything in, and once combined, I'll set that aside, take another bowl, and then add my egg and sugar. I'll whisk those two together until pale yellow and frothy and then I'm going to combine that with the dry ingredient, folding it in while adding my malam. Once combined, we are set and ready to cook. The butter for your drop scones should not be as light as crepe butter, neither should it be as heavy as like chapati dough but it should be somewhere in between and that in between should be similar to cake butter not too light not too dense but just in between and the correct consistency as you can see is a bit sticky but still very very malleable that's the correct consistency you too should attain instead of milk i also prefer using mala for my drop scones and some of you may be wondering i Hello here, why are you using mala? Well, I use mala because of the slight acidity it has. Mala enables your drop scones to become very, very fluffy and very, very spongy. And it's something that is always welcome. And it's an ingredient available in all Kenyan homes. So please utilize it. It's delicious when you drink it as is, but it's also, also a key ingredient for cake for mandazi, for drop scones, for nearly anything. So just DM me and ask me, even for marination, you guys. 
Mala is a very, very hot and popping kitchen ingredient, so don't sleep on it. To my foreign readers, Mala is fermented milk. And if you're watching this from southern parts of Africa, Amasi is a good equivalent. If you're watching this from Middle East, Kefir is a good ingredient. For those watching from Northern America, buttermilk, fantastic substitute. And for anyone who can't find any of the substitutes I've mentioned, plain yogurt is an umbrella substitute for mala. So now that we are done, Talking about everything and our butter is nice and combined, also well rested, we're going to proceed with the cooking process. No sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. And she's always gone too long. doing my final batch and everything looks perfectly golden and the aroma in my kitchen not anyone beer mm, the best ever drop scones are usually made um flat but i like making mine a bit more rounded because that's how my mom used to make them and that's how i by default make mine as well but if you want to make yours a bit flatter the butter will allow so go right ahead as this cook and we prepare to remove them from the heat, I have to mention one thing that's very, very important. For the oil, make sure it's just right because if the oil is too hot, your, your drop scones will um, eva on the outside but the inside will remain very, very raw. But if the oil is a bit on the colder side, the drop scones will absorb a lot of the oil and become very, very soggy and that's not what we want. It needs to be just right so that the outside cooks and the inside remains nice and fluffy but also cooked as well. Now we are done to try Zikwa Mosho, then we go and plate and eat! <laughs> Guys, we are done and you have to admit that was super super easy. This is a nice recipe for everyone to try out. And actually, <laughs> this girl dim, I made of her dream. And this is the perfect. Nezonja, <laughs> Nezonja. Okay, Choi. Okay. I made of her dream, it was upper body day. So this is the perfect post workout snack. I cook and she makes me work out. Okay, okay like she time. eats too much for me, yes. for my liking, but <laughs> yeah, she keeps me in shape. Okay. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Can you hear the crunch? Mm -mm. I hope you guys can hear the crunch. What can you taste? Cinnamon? Correct. Hey! <laughs> it's a bouncy vizuri. Exactly as it should be. Mm -hmm. But it still has that crunch. Good, good, good. I go ngoja. The taste of the vlog. I tell me what is jakula, but now as you, as she has said, you can taste the cinnamon. Mm. I'm sure the karaku iko ko umbali. It's mm. nice and spongy as it should be. You can taste the spices. It's also sugary bizuri. Not Just overwhelming the sugary. Mm. Anyway, my hot sister. We should do a video together. We should. We should. Workout video. Allah fu. Food video. <laughs> Sour. <laughs> <laughs> For what coach I know to Nishinda, but anyway, subscribe to her channel AC underscore Michelle if you want to get your body looking like hers and like mine too. <laughs> if you're yet subscribed to my channel as well, please do. I'd love to have you as part of K Nation. Yes. Share this recipe, tag me on any social media platform. Kamakawaida, the exact recipe quantities are on my blog. Link down below. For us, it's now time to go have our breakfast, so bye bye! bye, -bye. <laughs>